that the mission of Gloucester Public Schools is for all students to be successful, engaged, lifelong learners. And I'll ask you to join me to the school. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So tonight is our public hearing on um, the proposed school budget. And the process is this. We will have a presentation of, of the budget. Um, this budget was voted by the school committee two weeks ago. And um, we will then review the public comment um, this week. And we will vote again a week from tonight for a budget to be sent on to the administration. The administration then has about a month or so before they have to pass it on to the city council. The city council will review it. On May 13th, we will come and um, to the city council B&F and um, uh, answer questions and, and once again review the budget. But ultimately, we will get what the, um, the administration recommends and the city council passes. So, um, we, at which point, after that happens, we'll sit down again and make adjustments to our budget and, and reconcile it with what the number that is given to us by the city. So it's a long um, process and um, it has a lot of moving parts, but and this is one of them. So I'm going to turn it over to the superintendent who's going to do the proposal, uh, the proposed budget, and we will then open up the public hearing. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank everyone for coming out tonight. It's most appreciated. Well, thank you. Um, as Mr. Pope mentioned, it's uh, been a long process. Uh, each year, the, the budget process begins in and around November with principals and department heads uh, submitting information about what they feel their needs and what the expectations are for next year. Uh, it goes through a distillation process. Uh, it's reviewed both uh, in my office, uh, in the, usually in January and February, and simultaneously the Building Finance Subcommittee is doing its review of the budget as well. And uh, we've reached a point where we have an FY20 uh, proposed budget. It is, uh, began as a level service budget, but it also includes a number of additional requests. And uh, if there's a message that we want to communicate, it's that uh, our needs increase, the needs of the children increase, and we're, uh, our budget is reflecting, or our proposed budget is reflecting what we feel we need in order to do service and justice uh, for our children. The budget, of course, uh, is uh, what uh, provides the, the backdrop for uh, the academics, the social pieces, all that uh, make up uh, what we do on a daily basis. And uh, much of that is um, identified in our district improvement plan, uh, that has been discussed at length here within the last month or so, so I'm not going to go through the entire plan. It would be too extensive. extensive. But I do want to um, uh, just mention some of the highlights. Our district improvement plan has consistently uh, maintained four columns, four strategic objectives, uh, unification and coherence to our curriculum, uh, meeting individual student needs in a variety of ways uh, through different kinds of interventions, uh, the effective use of data to drive instruction, and a strong sense of professional culture and our outreach to the community uh, at the same time. Within the strategic objectives, there are particular initiatives. Uh, we've been working in an inter-district initiative. Six different districts have been working together. And this particular district improvement plan does include a strong infusion of some of those ideas. The first being increasing student engagement. And we're looking at uh, multi-year, multi-district professional development. Uh, we're looking at the ways in which we can increase and enhance our project-based learning. And we're looking at ways, particularly at the elementary level, that uh, increase their competence, their confidence, their capacity to read and understand what they're reading and, and express that in both uh, verbally and in writing. Uh, curriculum review and revision is an ongoing cyclic process at all levels. Uh, we continue to examine our preschool through grade 8 literacy for vertical alignment so that consistently each grade knows what to expect from the previous grade and what uh, the, grade, uh, the next grade also is looking for as well. In special education, uh, we're looking at uh, a number of uh, protocols uh, including eligibility for assistive technology, 
uh, improving understanding of the neuropsych um, assessments in relation to learning and language-based learning disabilities, and we want to increase the content knowledge, particularly in that of our special uh, education teachers. The tiered system of supports, uh, of course, refers to um, what is known in the trade as response to intervention. As children show us that there are slight deficiencies in the learning uh, relative to what other students are learning as well, we need to find ways to provide individualized instruction. Uh, next generation MCAS preparation, there's a host of things that we do from analysis of data to making sure that the online computer keyboarding skills of students is uh, that are fast enough so that they can uh, both express and get it out on paper, so to speak, uh, at the uh, same time. Strengthening higher order thinking skills uh, is something that also has permeated the district for quite a number of years. Uh, it involves high leverage reading, writing, and math strategies. Uh, science programs that emphasize inquiry, investigation, and experimentation. And um, in, uh, in elementary math, it's not just enough to know the formula to solve something, but are there alternative ways through your own thinking process that you can come to the, uh, to the right answers. And at the high school, there's an immersion in uh, what's called understanding by design. We've talked about that uh, a number of times here as well. Uh, technology. Uh, and we're, uh, we're now reaching a point where a replacement cycle for the Chromebook Initiative is necessary, and the budget uh, reflects that. And uh, there's a host of infrastructural kinds of things that need to be done, not only to reinforce uh, our one-to-one -one program, but the entire district. There's just a host of things, and we could ask Grant to rattle them off, but we wouldn't know what he was talking about anyway, so <laughs> it's all good. Um, in English language learners, pending funding, uh, we need uh, sufficient teaching staff and adequate uh, compliance so that students are getting uh, adequate instruction. We're providing classes in SEI, um, strategic, oh, SEI. And we also want to be able to monitor, monitor those strategies uh, in the classroom to make sure that they're being implemented as well. And we're looking at some uh, after school and summer tutoring programs uh, through Title uh, III grant uh, funding. The self-evaluation plan is something which uh, came through the coordinator program review. And in a nutshell, we want to make sure that there's equity, access, that uh, uh, the code of conduct is being enforced in a, in a fair fashion, and that uh, each and every student has the opportunities that they seek, and that uh, all doors are open uh, for them. And uh, MCAS goal, we have established an MCAS goal for student growth percentile, which measures how students have performed from one year to the other. There's a, there's a whole calculation that uh, takes place. Uh, last, uh, professional development. Uh, well, one of the things I had mentioned, that inter-district uh, initiative that we have, and one of the things that we're looking to become increasingly more culturally responsive, more equity-minded, and to ensure that our teaching is informed by data-based inquiry cycles. And last, our communications and public relations efforts uh, both online, newspapers, uh, television, video, whatever we can possibly do to get the message out as well. So that uh, allows us then to turn to the uh, proposed draft itself. And um, there are, it's like a rite of spring, there are annual changes to the proposed budget that are always going to affect our budgets each year. Cost of living adjustments, health insurance increases, Step increases, which means going from step, a teacher going from step five to step six, and lane changes, meaning a teacher going from a master's degree to a master's plus third. Uh, all of those uh, impact on an annual basis uh, the increases to our budget. The FY20 proposed budget is now at $43,728,214. That's $1.7 million above our current FY19 budget and we're looking at a percent increase at this point of 4.27%. Again, um, the school committee administration field is very important to emphasize to the city what our actual needs are in terms of service. If we begin to look at some of the cost adjustments, the most significant cost adjustments to the budget, uh, there's a cost of living placeholder for $567,000. Uh, the aforementioned uh, salary increases due to steps, moving in steps, $415,000. Uh, lane changes, again, massive to masses plus 30, and we anticipate the cost of being $250,000. Uh, we do have a loss of a grant uh, which did provide salaries for nurses, 
uh, that grant has turned, it's morphed into a competitive grant uh, that we're taking a look at and I can uh, refer to later on. But um, that salary for nurses now must go into the general fund uh, to the cost of $68,937. Our food service director salary, uh, we do have a placeholder there uh, for that particular salary because at this point we don't know whether the food service revolving account will be sufficient enough at the end of the year to fund that particular salary. So there has to be a backup, some insurance to make sure that we can uh, pay the person, otherwise we should leave and we don't want that to happen. <laughs> Health insurance uh, uh, has been going up. I've got a chart to show you historically over the last four or five years uh, where that's gone, but um, we're anticipating at this point around a $400,000 increase. Uh, to our health insurance. That's due to uh, increase in the cost of health insurance. Um, it's also due to uh, the particular insurance plans that uh, staff members choose. And in some instances, those insurance plans have increased more than others. So it's the ratio, it's the distribution of who is taking uh, which plans and in what numbers that impact what the ultimate percentage increase is going to be in health insurance. And uh, we may find a little bit of uh, relief in out-of-district SPED uh, tuitions. Uh, we have projected, uh, we projected uh, four less students uh, due to graduation or aging out. And uh, we've been hoping to uh, have that uh, count as a savings of around $154,000. However, in the last week, there's been some activity, Patty. Anything that uh, you care to report? Yeah, without giving too many, too, too much information that would be personally identifiable, um, uh, two students that are tuitioned into our district, um, we will be losing that tuition money for the next budget. So that's to the tune of $57,000. All right, so that will cost us to make some adjustments uh, as we move along. Uh, other cost adjustments to the proposed budget, again, due to the graduation aging out of some of our SPED students. We're hoping that out of district special education transportation will go down by around $33,000. Uh, science curriculum textbooks uh, is an addition to the budget, grades three through five. Uh, science textbooks, and we're in the process of uh, nailing down and, uh, what uh, program we're going to be using. Uh, technology, uh, we've spoken a little bit about that, the Chromebook replacement cycle, uh, the issue of ensuring that each of our schools and every classroom has uh, phone, have uh, VoIP phone, voice over internet protocol phones, that's a big safety issue. Um, in terms of retirements, uh, we anticipate savings of around $349,710. And then the additional staff requested by principals and directors uh, is $356,000. So our budget increase at this point at 4.27% is $1,789,316. Additional staff uh, requested, and the costs here do include uh, health insurance. Um, uh, our English language learner population has burgeoned. Uh, several years ago it was around 114, now it's about 178, and uh, counting. Uh, so we do need help in English language learners. We have been in communication with the, with the group AmeriCorps, and we are uh, hopeful and anticipating that we will be able to fill two positions, one at O'Malley and one at, at uh, Veterans. Uh, through the AmeriCorps. The cost for each of those uh, individuals would be $8,500. No benefits um, this is okay. but No benefits related to those uh, two particular positions. Uh, at Beeman, uh, there is a need for special education para, uh, so that is a, a request uh, that we're hoping to honor. And uh, with insurance, that's a $38,000 bill. We have a number of students going up into the high school uh, with uh, specific learning disabilities, particularly with respect to reading, and the numbers and the need warrant uh, that we have a reading specialist come on board at the high school, uh, and that, uh, if we find a full-time equivalent, that would be around $80,000. If we don't find that, we would have to look to a contracted service, and that would cost uh, more than that. Um, at O'Malley, we've got uh, the media, media literacy person right now who's sort of doing double duty, help, duty helping with the specials, uh, but at the cost of some of the 
uh, media literacy work that should be done. Uh, if possible, we are looking for a 0.6 full-time equivalent. Uh, that would cost around $40,000. Uh, due to the 50 um, uh, English language learner students at Gloucester High School and the need to coordinate the different programs and where students are at different levels of fluency, there is a request for an EL coordinator, uh, 0.5. Um, when we spoke with AmeriCorps, Greg has been uh, spearheading that effort. Uh, they said there might be a possibility of a third uh, person who could fill in and then one of our existing staff could become the coordinator, uh, but we're not counting on that, so that's a $25,000 cost. Uh, GHS uh, needs a library A. Uh, the library is a heavily trafficked area. Uh, the media specialist there is a busy, busy person. Uh, so to provide some assistance uh, is the request. And in order to uh, provide more, uh, more coaching in math at uh, three of our elementary schools at uh, West Parish and Plum Cove and East Gloucester, there is a request uh, for increased math coaching. In order to make it work, uh, we probably would have to go with a one uh, full-time equivalent uh, that could also enable us to um, have that person half-time at the middle school. Uh, that would be a possibility as well. And then there's the issue at the high school of alternatives uh, to suspension. We have applied for a grant uh, which would enable us to hire somebody who would be the coordinator of an in-house suspension at the high school uh, and the whole uh, the arrangement would be that there would be a, a direct, direct, close communication and contact with our social services and our therapeutic mental health services uh, as well, uh, and we're waiting together on that particular grant. We've also signed up with a program called PASS, uh, which means that students who uh, receive suspensions uh, can volunteer to go to, I believe, the YMCA in Beverly is where the facility is. And uh, in a similar fashion, they would serve their suspension there, but they would be working with counselors and therapists and mental health uh, social service people to sort of see what they can do to change their behavior. Um, and a third option, uh, should uh, uh, the grant fall through, is to consider a paraprofessional who would then run slash govern an alternative in-house suspension at the high school as well. So that brings us to the $356,000. Uh, potential funding from the city. Um, the first column uh, gives you the percentages. This is a what if slide. Uh, what if the uh, city funding comes in at 3.5% all the way down to what if it comes in at 2.25%. The second column tells you how much money that would be offered and provided by the city in order for us to bring our budget into line. So for example, 3.50% uh, uh, should that happen, uh, then uh, that would equate to $1.4 million. The third column um, tells us that if we are over budget, uh, is it in red? Can you see that? Yeah. That's the amount of money that we would have to reduce in order to bring uh, the, the budget into balance with what the city has provided. And then the last is, uh, is constant because we're now at a $1.7 million increase over this year's budget. So for example, uh, if the city should come in at 2.75, they would be offering us $1.1 million. And based upon our current budget today, at this time, we would have to reduce that by $636,000. Historically, uh, the city's contribution from FY16 through FY19, uh, on the, uh, the top row where it says city contribution, you see the numbers. And on the second row, you can see that back in FY16, uh, we received 2.89%, FY17, 2.50%, FY18, 2.17%, and last year, 2.19%. So the average is 2.44. Uh, if the city comes in at 2.44, so let's call that 2.5, uh, that means that the current budget would have to be reduced by $741,000. And the district tuitions, uh, if you look at enrollment, you can see that it's remained relatively constant. And the change from FY19 to 20 shows the 68 going down to 64, subject to change. Uh, but you can also see that there's been about a $700,000 increase in the total costs uh, from uh, FY16, which was at 4.1, to FY20, which is now 4.8. 
which tells us that the cost of special education services is out flagging uh, the cost of living, right? English language learner costs. Uh, again, as I, I did mention before, in FY16 we had 114 students. We're now at 178 students. And um, our proposed, um, our anticipated costs in FY20 is at $553,633. And um, that includes the AmeriCorps situation, includes the EL coordinator. Gary, is that correct? Yes, that includes the L coordinator for 25000 and includes uh, teacher and vet veterans, which was hired after the FY19 budget was approved, and that was due to an enrollment increase. So that's a, it's a significant jump, but it's because we had to bring a teacher on this year. Right. Yeah, thank you. Health insurance costs, same trend. Uh, back in uh, FY16, it was $4.6 million. Uh, we are anticipating FY20, as things stand with the current budget, with new hires, um, a $6 million uh, cost for health insurance. And again, with the new hires, we're talking about an 8.43% uh, increase. The average over the course of the five years, uh, the four years, is, well, I guess it's the five, is the 7.4%. 7.24%. Um, of course, there are salaries that are not funded by the general budget, and um, the, the first column shows the various grants uh, that are supporting uh, salaries, Title II Improvement Grant, Special Education, that's the major grant in Special Ed. Uh, we do anticipate a bit of a reduction in Special Education Grant 240. Uh, early childhood is about the same. The essential school health is $68,000 is the aforementioned loss of salaries that we're going to uh, nurses. Our Title I, we do see that going up a little bit next year. Uh, and that, of course, also reflects the fact that our low income percentages are probably going up as well. And uh, so that brings a total in FY20 of $985,772. Um, uh, supported by grants for salaries, and that's a bit of a drop uh, from the current year. The same is true uh, for salaries funded by our revolving funds, grants, revolving funds. Uh, you see athletics is uh, going to remain the same. Uh, the school choice grant uh, is at, uh, is at 176000 and we anticipate 182. Uh, our ROTC, uh, is uh, at 90 and may go down because of the retirement of a very eminent uh, uh, teacher who's uh, retiring at the end of this year. Um, uh, preschool is at about the same uh, cost in terms of salaries, transportation, a little bit of a dip. Um, and that may uh, also be reflected in the fact that we anticipate our out of uh, district uh, transportation costs to go down around $33,000. And school food, food service, which foots almost the entire bill, food service director notwithstanding, um, is at uh, anticipated to be at 402787 So uh, both our grants and our revolving funds, uh, both are supporting salaries to the tune of just under a million dollars uh, for each. So I believe that brings us, no, I'm sorry, capital needs. Uh, our major capital needs um, involve the, the field house uh, and the bleachers at Gloucester High School. And it's our understanding that there is an estimate on the table now at about $1.4 million to renovate and or replace uh, both. Uh, the preschool, uh, of course, um, is, uh, is, is, is getting used. The numbers now are in the 130s, close to 150. All right, I shouldn't have linked. And uh, when we first moved here, it was in 75. So um, they are, you know, it's all, they're busting out all over, and, um, and the administration needs to relocate as well. On the preschool, um, the reason we, I, we put the 3.7 down is my understanding that in the lease for this particular building, there is a fixed purchase price through the life of the lease of 3.7. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, no guarantees that, um, as uh, Dorian Whittier, the, uh, the resident architects, are looking across the district at the high school and the middle school. Uh, there's no guarantee that that will be able to match that figure for a renovation or not. Uh, all of that's in the works uh, right now. We have been meeting with them. Uh, they've been taking notes, establishing space summaries and needs, and now they're searching the district to see what the most viable option is going to be. And uh, the same is uh, also the case for um, uh, administration and its need to relocate as well. Alrighty, um, this is a, a budget uh, summary, and uh, we see a comparison between FY19 and uh, FY20. Um, and the, the last column, uh, well, the next to last column where it says difference, obviously, is the difference in cost between this year and next year. And uh, the difference, the last column, is a percentage. What is the difference between what the budget is for that particular area now and what we anticipate it's going to be uh, for next year? <coughs> if we look at the main office and we see it's an 8.25% uh, increase, the bulk of that, two-thirds of it, is, it's now for the third time I've mentioned it, it has to do with the nurse's salary uh, that uh, we lost the grant on. Um, uh, it, at GHS, we see a 5.37% increase. Uh, we've added that uh, uh, nursing position. Uh, we also have the EL coordinator additional request as well in there. Vocational has gone up 11.01% because there's a, there are auto lifts, seven of them. For some reason, I thought there were three, but there are seven auto lifts uh, that need to be repaired, and that's a safety issue. Um, and uh, that's a minimum of $25,000 to $30,000, if I'm not mistaken. If we continue uh, looking at the different uh, departments, if you will, uh, I say the next one that where there's something significant is in technology. Uh, we've already mentioned it. Uh, this has to do with phones in the classrooms and the Chromebook replacement schedule. Google now, as I understand it, used to service uh, Chromebooks for four years within the past few, half a year or so. Now they have extend, expanded that to five. But as we've gone up through the grades, our Chromebooks now are reaching that point where there has to be a replacement cycle. And uh, the technology department has been very adept at putting together a proposed plan over the next, up through 2027, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Uh, we also are going to the leasing as opposed to purchasing uh, because of the, it, it helps to lower out the annual costs and, and balancing thing, balance those things out for us as well. And uh, professional, uh, well, you see employee benefits, 7.88%. Uh, uh, um, so that may or may not include the, the new hires because we have a different figure. Well, that includes all the employee benefits. Okay. So other than health insurance, the other benefits remain flat. Mm -hmm. So it's less than the 8.43 that we mentioned before. Right. Thank you. And then uh, <clears throat> under professional development, it's a bit misleading because it says PD, but it's really for the science textbooks um, at the elementary level. <clears throat> and uh, another way of, of looking at the same, uh, this is a comparison from FY16 through FY20. And um, the, the, the last column um, and the, the, the column prior to that are giving percentages, but those are percentages of the entire budget. So if we look at the main office, uh, which in FY16, by the way, was at 4.45, and we projected at 3.7 next year, that means 3.7 of the entire budget, the entire $43 million. Um, you know, if this, it would be a bit of a repeat for Oscar High School. We mentioned that already. The vocational program uh, has been mentioned. Um, for the most part, there's relative consistency. Um, and uh, just to wrap it up, Special education, back in FY16, was at 28.92. Uh, this year it's at 30.04% of the entire budget, and we're anticipating it being at 29.87% um, next year. And you see the rise in employee benefits as well. 
as we move through uh, through the years and in comparison to last year as well. And I think that is the story. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we're going to um, open the public uh, hearing. I just I would like to just recognize that we have. Um, a number of principals and um, uh, department heads, uh, preschool and Jordan is here, uh, East Gloucester and Pescarello, uh, Bean and Jody Ginotti, West Parish, Tolina and Mel, uh, Plum Cove, uh, Tammy Morgan, O'Malley, Lynn Beatty, um, the high school principal James Cook is here, our SPED director, Wendy, Patty Wegman uh, is here, our IT director, Grant Harris is here, uh, and we have two city councilors, Jim Holman and so, um, thank you for all um, for coming and uh, for your attention. Um, also, I would just like to mention uh, on the slide the capital needs that were um, stated. Those are not part of the budget. Those are, we make these repo this request at this time uh, of year, but it is not part of our operating budget. So those those numbers are not. In there. Okay, so I'm going to open the public hearing. Uh, if you'd like to speak, uh, please uh, step up to the uh, podium and state your name um, clearly because we are dependent on our recording uh, for our minutes uh, tonight. Um, and if you brought a prepared statement, uh, please uh, give it to the superintendent. Um, so, I'm going to open the public hearing. Public hearing is open. Feel free to speak. teacher at Gloucester High School and I am just coming to say that um, that um, the budget that has been proposed I mean that just keeps us at pretty much bare bones I mean the, the, the I know um, the mayor had said in I brought the Gloucester Daily Times when they she said the city what did she say in here that they had more money to work with than ever before. And my cynical side wanted to say, well, how much more is more than barely anything? So, um, and you can see from the numbers, I forget which slide, I wanted to take a picture of it, that showed just like, anyhow, I'm, I'm actually the not. The percentages provided. Yeah, the and now I'm really not doing, because I'm stuttering, I'm not promoting good <laughs> teaching. <laughs> anyhow, I'm nervous on camera. Um, but I would like the, the, the budget to be approved as is because we desperately need it. Um, we actually need more than that and we haven't been given more than that. We keep um, working with less and less and having less resources, less things available for our students. We have an increase in the high needs populations. Um, there's a lot of stressors for the kids that are happening. And when you don't have support staff or you don't have appropriate resources, that just continues and kids are given the best education they can have. Never mind just the best childhood they can have. Um, and so by adding those stressors to staff and to students, we're really not preparing them very well. Um, so also too, um, with the about the vocational program, I'm so pro-vocational program. We are so lucky that we have this here in Gloucester High School and right, right here in town. Um, so the lifts are essential because the, the auto program is at capacity. They actually turn students away. And um, we never replaced the auto shop, the second auto shop teacher. There used to be two auto shop teachers. And um, Jack Porter has been operating by himself for two or three years now. And with kids dying to get in, um, the lifts are essential. So things like that. And our carpentry program to have 
you know, we haven't replaced another teacher there. We lost an English teacher last year. And with, a, I mean, it's a, essential that our department just not be cut further. We should actually be putting that person back in. Um, so, I mean, I've been at Foster High School for 10 years. I really love my job. Um, Love it more now that we have an amazing principal and always the great staff. Not that I'm trying to get a raise or anything, but um, <laughs> anyhow. So if we could just please, this budget absolutely. I mean, we have, we need more money, and it's not there to give. So please don't take any more from what little that we already have. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else loves. Um, Belle Gilman, 75, Revere Street. I just have a suggestion for a school committee. Um, one of the things that I think would be really um, helpful to see in the presentation that's going to move forward um, to the City Council, by the way, I am on the City Council and I sat in those seats for six years as well. Um, so one of the things that I think would be helpful, there was a lot of really good information <coughs> out there, but I'd like to see a lot of it on one document. So, in other words, if we could see the change in time of the, maybe the last five years of the budget, it would be really interesting to also see out of district sped costs, how many students um, throw the, the health insurance onto that, and also the headcount, the different schools. You know, so I, I think that that would be really helpful because there's stories to be told about a lot of it and sometimes we're not seeing all the different elements and though just seeing it all on one piece of paper I think would would be a good way to kind of bring it all together and describe the total story instead of having to go to 10 different slides you know I saw the big presentation of like 22 and you had some bar graphs and and you, you know you could see the special ed costs and how many students and but, you know, I think that that's really important. And another issue that's always important to me is how many, um, you know, how many people come into the district mid-year. Um, that's a good number to see as well because that definitely changes the complexion of the whole budget um, because those are students that you didn't account for that come in with three or four different language needs and it kind of makes everybody scramble. So I think the more, the more data on one document would be a compelling summary, at least from when, where I sit on the City Council. So thank you for your hard work. Um, you guys do amazing work. Staff, you're amazing. And um, I'm proud of you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Oh, you're getting out of the way for me. <laughs> my name is Cecilia Cross. I live at 6 AME Drive, and um, I hope I don't get shot on the way out. Um, I was here two years ago and there were several people here who have chosen not to come to these meetings anymore because we just kind of get patted on the head and say, go away, we hear you, and that's the, the end of the conversation. Nobody is against education or against schools, but two years ago there was an opening and the CFO had retired. And instead of putting your financial needs onto the city, you went and hired another CFO that costs the city even more money and the taxpayer. And it becomes a cost center that doesn't need to be. That's number one. Number two, and, and you can justify having a CFO for a $40 million corporation, potentially. But prior to Mr. Farmer's entrance, there was no CFO. The city did it. Um, number two, the budget is really confusing. I only use 2017. Uh, numbers and 2017 total expenditures on the state website are 54 million dollars 
And then there's an additional 17 million on the city side, which gets you up to 71 million dollars. So it's really hard because, and you're shaking your head no, sir, but the problem is we all pay for it. And it's not a city budget, it's the school budget, and the total is really 71 million. What goes to operations is a whole different story than the total expenditures of the school budget. And I think in the future, I think that has to be put out for the city to know. Because we're paying more than 60% of the total budget of the, of the city to the schools. And then we've lost 27.5% of the population, which get, get just, gets us down to about 2,900 children, which puts the per cost per student on a $71 million budget at $24,000. And the majority of these kids are not getting a $24,000 education. They are not college ready. They are not career ready. They are not think on a beach ready. And I think it's time that this school committee wakes up and realizes we need leadership in this school system that knows how to deal with low socioeconomic, non-English speaking, and special ed education. There are schools all over the country that are doing this, that are getting leadership in to address these types of children that are educable and deserve a great education. And for that cost, it is not fair to the taxpayers. The other thing is, with all due respect to the teachers I know who work really, really hard, it says on the state website, I don't know if it's true for all of you, that the average salary is $79,000. There's no way we as taxpayers should be paying 90% of their health care premium. That has to stop. The contract has to be renegotiated on the city side as well as the, as the school side. It is unfair. All of our health care costs go up. There isn't anybody to pay them. And there's nowhere that says somebody who works nine months a year actually deserves $79,000. A teacher does, maybe, but we don't, we don't have to pay their health insurance. And on top of it, if you all don't realize there's a $300 million unfunded liability in this city that has to be addressed. So I would say that it's time for new leadership in this school system, and it's time to rethink what education is, and how we successfully educate children that we're paying $24,000 per child for. Thank you. Just a, a couple of quick corrections. Um, I've been on the school committee since 1998, and we have always had a CFO. And the city pays 75% of health care. It depends, different things. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Can I add something to mine? Well, we've got time. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> it was, um, well, like, I guess I have to go up to the podium. Yes. Um, I just, I forgot to mention about the, um, why the library aid position is so important. We had the library aid last year, and she said that the aid position's been there for a long time. And so that enabled the library to be open all the time. Students could come up, have lunch, study, test, everything. And because, as Dr. Sapphire said, our library media specialist is pulled in a million different directions, the library has had to be closed many, many times where students aren't able to access it. I mean, teachers can go in with students, that's not the issue, but students in terms of getting a Chromebook, if their Chromebook is broken, being able to check something out, being able to like just go in there because they have some, you know, lunchtime, and um, $38,000 a year, how many, I mean, that's a, somebody living on that. So really, I mean, I mean, <coughs> It's really not that much, and somebody who's willing to do that job and still have to like pay for her house and her kids and all that other stuff. I mean, really. Um, and it'd be great in an ideal world that we get the library get librarians at all the elementary schools. Eventually, been here for ten years. We haven't had a librarian in any of the elementary schools, which is disgusting <laughs> and we talk about special ed and reading skills and higher 
thinking and critical thinking, and we're not encouraging that in the very basic of a library. So that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm sure I'll think of more, and you'll tell me now. Well, you can, you can, um, you can send them uh, a letter or an email or do Oh, I do. <laughs> I, I think you've seen me enough times up here that um, I, I do all those things, so I'm not shy about it. Thank you. Thank you. And anybody else can do that, too. <laughs> Maggie. Good evening, I'm Maggie Rosa, 26 Port Hill Avenue. I'm also a member of the uh, high school site-based council. And as um, a member of this group, um, we have had a recent discussion about mentors um, for high school students. And one of the issues that came up in the subsequent conversation was exactly what Cynthia was speaking about, the need to keep the library open um, all the time, and the fact that there is not this, and I'm pleased to say that this position, this uh, part-time position for a library aide is included in the budget, because it is clearly, in, um, it has been a, a detraction from the efforts of um, the Gloucester Writers' Centre under the um, guidance of Joanne Hart to um, help students with their college essays. The, the timing <coughs> has not worked. So I'm echoing Cynthia's comments about the need for this position. Thank you, Cynthia, for pulling it forth. Um, no. I, I have to say that kids only get one opportunity in life for an edu this education. Each year is crucial to them. And I do hope that the City Council um, and the School Committee can work so hard together to come to a budget that is um, beneficial to the students because we all care for them. And again, I echo the um, compliments to the hard-working staff and administrators of the um, district. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Then I'm going to close the public hearing. Anybody like to uh, make a comment or? I'll make a comment. I, I'm, um, I, we've had many public hearings in my time on the school committee. It's a nice turnout tonight, really nice. Um, and we welcome input. Uh, as um, Jonathan said, we take emails and things like that. So over the course of time, if there are things you think about in terms of priorities or, um, or just general feedback on things that have happened in the past that have been effective that you really like about what we're doing or, or areas that we could be um, doing doing better. Um, I know there's playground issues at Beeman, but that doesn't come out of our operating budget, sorry. <laughs> but I know there are many things as it relates to learning um, and compliments to what's going on well in a lot of our schools are always welcome because I know um, there's some great stuff going on everywhere. Um, so I, as much as we have needs, I think we're meeting most of them, and, and our budget shows what we need for meeting some more. Joel? Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming, and again, echo what people have said. The staff at our school is excellent. Our teachers, our administration, everyone working together. Um, my experience tonight was a little bit different than the last public hearings that I've done, which is about 12, if not nine more on the, when I sat on the tech. But um, what, I, what I'm realizing sitting here tonight is that I don't know that we've done the best job getting information out to the public, educating the public on what we need. Because even though we're talking about numbers, it's not always about numbers. Um, and for example, I get a little frustrated when I hear that our enrollment has gone down, but yet our costs have gone up. And while that seems to make sense for some people, um, the reality is 
It costs more money to educate a child now than it did years ago when our numbers were higher. So I feel like we have a little bit more work to do to educate the public to understand why we're spending so much of the taxpayers' money and the importance of it. And I hope that's something that we can accomplish um, going forward so that we all understand why we're advocating for a budget that is over 4%, which is really high. Um, and here, knowing the city isn't likely going to fund that, um, the stories that we talk about behind those slides are real. The special education stories are um, real and need to be told, I think, in a better way so that people understand why our budget is so high. Um, so I really want to thank you all for coming. I appreciate every comment that's been said and um, hope we do a little bit better before the budget is approved um, so that the needs of our kids are addressed and um, the city and the schools can come out feeling good about what we're doing. So thank you all. Anyone else? Okay, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and participating. I'd like to thank all the administrators that, that, that showed up and done. As I said, this is a, um, an ongoing process. There'll be um, many more um, scenes and acts as we go down this path. Um, we will, um, next week, a week from tonight, we will vote a budget that'll go to the, um, to the administration. Um, as we know, things change daily. As as uh, we learned tonight, one of the one of the numbers changed since this morning, more or less, um, and um, uh, that's going to continue to happen, um, and we'll continue to make adjustments as we, as we go down this path. So, thank you very much. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Very much.